It was the summer of 2000. A brand new show was changing television for years to come, and allegations of rigging were in the work. Survivor Borneo premiered that summer and would start the mega franchise here in America for the next 40 seasons. However, before an episode even aired, the show had one legal issue. That issue was Stacy Stillman, one of the original 16 castaways. Stacy was part of the Tagi tribe. She was infamous for trying to create the show's first alliance that would end up being one of the most fundamental parts of the game for years to come, but her plan backfired and it didn't work. However, after the Tagi tribe did lose the third immunity challenge, Stacy, along with the rest of her tribe had attended tribal council, the show's elimination ceremony. The vote was between Stacy and 72 year old Rudy Bosch, the oldest contestant left in the game. After a 5 to 2 vote, Stacy was eliminated from the game. She was the youngest person to be voted out at the time, after the first two contestants voted out were in their 60s. But after she was voted out, Stacy walked to the tribal council and left her final words in the confession booth the next morning after a tremendous downpour, and she was on her way to the hotel. Six days later, Stacy's fellow tribemen, Dirk Bean, was voted off of Tagi's next tribal council, and the two would run into each other at the hotel where the production staff was holding all the voted out contestants. During this encounter, Dirk mentioned that Mark Burnett, the show's producer, had approached him and fellow tribesman Sean Kniff and pitched the idea of voting out Stacy over Rudy. After hearing this, Stacy was not happy. Stacy, who was a lawyer at the time, decided to craft a lawsuit against the network. Now, Stacy's lawsuit was a big thing at the time. We're going to go through the lawsuit and I'm going to explain a little bit of how it worked out and how the process went out throughout the history. Since Stacy was a lawyer, she did know there were some rules that they were not allowed to work at the competition. So we are going to take a look at the United States Code of Law for Game Shows. In US Code 47, Section 509, we can see that bribery, persuasion, and intimidation to influence Sean or Dirk to vote Stacy out is considered against the law. This would be a manipulation of the contestants. So Stacy filed a lawsuit against CBS for alleged fraud, breach of contract, and unlawful business practices. In the lawsuit, Stacy claimed that, quote, Mark Burnett abused his relationships with the contestants and exerted unfair and unlawful pressure on Dirk and Sean to cast specific votes, thereby rigging the contest. Now I went back and looked at the documents. I'm going to show you a little bit of those. We're going to look back and see what Stacy filed to the court along with her team. It states on day nine of the contest, the Tagi tribe lost a third immunity challenge. This challenge took place on a beach. After the challenge was completed, contestants were required to remain on the beach while the TV production crew captured footage of the challenge's aftermath. During this time, Burnett directed that his book writer, Martin Dugard, take the plaintiff aside and interview her here. While the plaintiff was being interviewed by Dugard at Burnett's insistence, Burnett privately held a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Tagi members Dirk Bean and Sean Kniff. Burnett met with Bean first and then with Kniff. On information and belief, during these conversations, Burnett directly solicited Dirk Bean and Sean Kniff to vote against the plaintiff in order to eliminate her from the contest. Now I'm going to link the full lawsuit transcription in the description, but it would go on to state that the men were originally going to vote for Rudy, but Burnett hinted at challenges in the future that would be fitted better by Rudy instead of Stacy. In addition, at the time, one of CBS's top demographics was the older generation. At 72 years old, Rudy was the only contestant left that was over 40 years old after Sonya and BB were the first two voted out at the first two tribal councils that were in their 60s. They believe if Rudy was voted out, the older demographic would fall and survivors ratings would not have been as big of a hit as it was. Now after he was eliminated, the transcripts that were submitted to the courts read that Dirk had been given quote bad advice about his decision to vote out Stacy and he told her the whole situation about being a perched by Burnett. In addition, after the finale, Stacy stated that Mark Burnett sent a letter to all the contestants asking them for a letter to describe their experiences on the show. Stacy declined to send a letter, but according to Stacy, she said that Dirk sent a two-page letter in which he stated his disappointment about the situation where he felt manipulated into voting Stacy. In fact, Mark Burnett did acknowledge that he did receive this letter. CBS would go on to deny all these allegations. In an article with the San Francisco Gate back in 2001, they said, quote, We heard about Stacy Stillman's allegations several months ago. They have no merit then. They have no merit now. 
that she's packaged him into a frivolous and groundless lawsuit. They would go on to say that Stacy wanted to be part of the Amazing Race that was in consideration at that time. But once CBS turned her down, they said that she stated she'd be quiet for money, as CBS quoted, when we declined to give her $5 million. In addition, back in 2001, according to the AP News, Sean did not feel that he was manipulated in the matter. It was also reported that Stacy sought out the lost prize money in an additional $75,000 for representing herself in the case. CBS would then go on to countersue Stacy with a $5 million countersuit for a breach of contract and defamation. It would state that she revealed key insider information to the public about the show, and this would break the confidentiality agreement with CBS that could be held liable for $5 million in damage. The countersuit claimed that Stacy had been running with the story since she was voted off of the show in order to get back at her humiliation in order to get attention and fame. And when we talk about getting fame, that was very big back then because all of the castaways that did come off of Borneo, they turned into celebrities. They had appearances on television shows, movies, and this led to a reunion on finale night with all the contestants, but that reunion was not a part of their original contract. This is all new for the contestants and Stacy did try to stage a rebellion behind the scenes against the producers so they could not have a reunion. But but when the court case came around, Dirk was questioned in the case. As Sean Sido was Burnett in the matter, he was not questioned on the incident. However, thanks to Medium.com, this is what Bird stated at the trial. Quote, now, you really begin to seriously think, who are you going to vote off? At a point, I was approached by Mark Burnett, producer of the show, and he came up to me and we had a very short and to the point conversation. And he basically made the point to me that Rudy Bosch, another contestant in the show, type of skills that he brings and his abilities for are going to be very important down the road and the difficult challenges that will be important to you as a tribe. And so, the best thing that could be done for you would be to do form an alliance against Stacy and vote Stacy off because Rudy is the guy you will need in the future. I simply looked at it as somebody who knew everything and for whatever reason he was giving you an answer or giving you a key to success and took that and said, okay, Here's somebody who knows everything. I need to look at this and at least respect it and say, okay, why is he saying this? And put some thought into it. So like I said earlier, Dirk was leaning towards Rudy and then he switched his vote to Stacy. However, Dirk did end up stating at the end of the day, it was his own decision that he voted off Stacy from the island. He was the one who had to write the name down on the piece of paper not Mark Burnett, even though he may have regretted the decision. The court did throw out CBS's countersuit for a breach of contract, stating that she did not break her $5 million confidentiality agreement. The case did not proceed much further. Mark Burnett would go on to settle it out in court for an undisclosed amount of money. Now looking back at it, it is not the only difficult moment that the show has been through in the last 20 years. Recently we've had some worse ethical moments that I'm not going to talk about for good reason, but it is important to look back and see how this impacts the show. Now all contestants are required to go to the reunion unless they are banned by CBS. And this is a lawsuit people will still be talking about for many years to come when it comes to reality television lawsuits. Thanks for watching another video from my channel. This video could not have been done without a lot of research and the help from a lot of sources and articles about this piece of history. I'm going to leave these in the description. I invite you to check them out if you're interested in learning more because there is way more to dive deep into this and I just skimmed over the top of it in order to create a short but very detailed video for you guys to understand what happened. But if you like this video, make sure to press a like and comment down below. Make sure to subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss an upload. And until next time, this is Reality TV History. See ya.